welcome to Paint a Beautiful Picture. Today we, we are going to talk about the normal developmental phase of about 6 to 11 or 12 year olds. The middles, the really strong developmental years. Your little person, from the time they're born until they're about 5, gains much of their personality. It's very formative. And then the about 6 to 10 or 11 phase is working out that personality. And so you'll see very strong elements of who that kid is, and you'll see them express themselves. They have a very strong sense of themselves, and they're going to let you know. It is a stage where kids make friends. They are extremely social in general. They're very active in play. They are even developing more strength and more musculoskeletal coordination. So now they can go across the monkey bars. Not every six-year-old can. This takes time to develop, but they can do things like go across the monkey bars, hit a ball with a bat. They have enough eye-hand coordination to do that. They're able to run uh, oftentimes a pretty good distance as long as they're physically active and healthy. They can mentally process a ton of information. You give them very complex commands in a sequential order, and you can expect them to do all of that pretty much with ease and continue to develop in adding more complexity and more skill to what is expected of them, and they're able to accomplish that. They learn so much at this point. They literally go from at about five, five and a half years old, not knowing how to read, not knowing how to write, not knowing a great deal about things in the world. And in these five or six years, they are literally going to be capable of expressing themselves in writing, very capable of reading tons of material and learning a broader sense of the world and of mathematics, social studies and sciences. Wow, this kid's mind is burgeoning, able to receive information and process it. So it's actually a really exciting time of development in a young person's life. And you as a parent basically need to let it happen. I'm not saying you're not participating because I think that you should be an incredibly active participant in what your child learns. Okay, by that I mean you should be walking with them in the woods. We, my sons and I used to collect caterpillars. Even my brother and I did this. And then we would look for cocoons or chrysalises, and we would literally cut a piece of the branch off and bring them into the house. When I was a kid, we would put them in the basement in a terrarium. We'd put a piece of screen over it. And as it started warming up in the spring, we would bring it up into our living room. My mom was okay about that, as long as the lid was on there. Uh, and literally watch it emerge. And it was very cool. So I did that exact same thing with my sons. In the spring, we would go get tadpoles in a creek. And the water was kind of gross and disgusting, but that's what they needed. And we would literally catch them on different days, about two or three weeks apart. And we would see them in the jar when they were little tiny things just out of the eggs. And then we would see them as they started to grow the back legs and they started to grow the forelegs. We, we just watched them. And I was very interested in things like trees and deciduous trees and various kinds of bark. And there are just so many things to show your kids. We even borrowed a friend's telescope. So we would go camping out outdoors and we would look at the constellations and look at the stars and take a look at the Milky Way. Yeah, I exposed my kids to all kinds of things. In that time frame, we did things like we went to the uh, art museum, we went to the Museum of Science and Industry, we went to the Henry Ford Museum. We went to so many museums and so many places. We went to SeaWorld, and I uh, did behind-the-scenes tours so my kids could learn about training the orcas and even things they did with dolphins and seals. And we went to the zoo a lot. Expose your kids to as many things as you can. We, I wanted to go to a space center and we didn't get to, but we studied a great deal about space. And so my kids understood space travel and things with NASA and the aeronautics division. There's so much to know and so much to learn and see what your kids are interested in and then start to develop those things because their interest in the world is burgeoning and their ability to learn is growing exponentially. So make use of that. Let me tell you something else about those kids. Because they're developing a sense of themselves and who they are and how they fit into the world, if you have already trained them 
to listen to you, to respond quickly, to be cooperative. They are more than capable of helping. Now, let me tell you the extent to which they're capable. When they're six or seven, I would always pull up a chair next to the stove and let my kids stir the gravy or, you know, check and see if the potatoes were done or look in the kit in the oven and see if the cookies were finished. They were always right there. Both of them, they had their own apron. And yes, I had boys. Boys need to eat, you know. Um, they had an apron and they were right there with me all the time. When I would do the dishes only one at a time, they would pull up the chair and stand on it. I didn't have a stool. If I had a stool or a ladder, I would have done this differently, but I'm telling you what happened. Uh, I would do the dishes. They would rinse the dishes. They would put it in the drain. Yes, we always use glass. Yes, sometimes things got broken. You know, life goes on, but they had to participate. They were helping me sweep the floor. They were helping me vacuum. They were helping me make the bed. They were helping me do the laundry and fold clothes. All of that to say to you, by the time my kids were 10 years old, one night a week, they were cooking dinner. So I'm going to tell you a really funny thing because you do have to watch them no matter how carefully you train them and instruct them. So here's my son, my redheaded son, Marcus, and he's making baked chicken. So he's getting everything ready. Well, of course, this is in the 70s. We had this old, old stove in the apartment where we lived and you had to turn on the gas and light the pilot down in the stove. So we had these long matches, the kinds for fireplace that we would use. So my son David and I were sitting in the dining room doing our homework and David yells out to Marcus, you know, don't forget about the pilot. Marcus says, I know it. So he's banging around the kitchen. We hear him peeling potatoes and all this. And all of a sudden he opens the door and we hear whoosh, this big sound. We both knew immediately what it was. We looked at one another. Oh my word. Marcus comes to the doorway between the kitchen and the dining room. He just looks at us with this look on his face. And all the hair right here around the edges of his forehead were singed off and curly. And his eyebrows were really singed. And David said, are you okay? And Marcus does this. He just takes his hand and brushes it. And he just brushes his eyebrows right off of his face. He didn't get burned. He wasn't terribly hurt. But it was hilarious. And I said to him, well, I see I need to stand in the kitchen with you when you start the stove. He's like, not really, Mama. I just got busy and forgot. Well, I could forget things too, so it wasn't that big of a thing. My point being that they're more than capable of doing things. You have to train them to do it. You have to expect them to do it. Then you teach them to enjoy doing it, and you let them do it because they're extremely capable. People who look at me and go, I have an 11-year-old and he doesn't do a thing except sit there and play video games. I have an 11-year-old and all she ever does is sit there on her phone and she's on Instagram and she's on Snapchat and I can't get her to do a thing. And here's what I have to say to you. That's on you because as a parent, you're not doing a very good job at training your child and at giving them responsibilities they're more than capable of handling. Believe me, middles are very capable, especially by time they're 10, 11, 12 years old. They should have chores. They should have responsibilities. They should have things they're very capable of and which they are doing. Then they have a strong sense of self-confidence and they feel good. Oftentimes, this is the time frame where they're exploring their interests. So you might do things like have them take piano lessons. My son, my one son loved it. My other son hated it. Have them take voice lessons. They both loved it and sang in all city choir. Have them do things like take writing lessons, do gymnastics, uh, go to a science club. There are so many cool things to do. Take them to the pool. Let them find out if they really, really love to swim. Take them to a pool with a diving board. My one son loved to dive. My other son didn't like it so well. Uh, there are so many things. It's very exploratory. And you need to explore and you need to allow them to explore. Let me say this to you. If your kid starts to play Little League or your little girl goes to dance class and they come home and they go, yeah, it wasn't like I thought. I really hate it. You need to make this call. This is a judgment call that you must make as a parent. A, do they need to keep going because they made a commitment to it? And you say, you're going to finish this season of Little League because we already did this and this and this, and you said you were going to. So though it's not your favorite, and you're not loving it every day, you're going to continue. Or do you say, I notice your coach really yells and cusses a lot, and it's not really a very great experience for you. So, okay, I hear you. It's really okay to quit. 
Or if your daughter's in dance and she said, you know, I really like ballet, but I don't love tap. Uh, I just don't want to do that. You say, listen, I hear you. Initially, your response is that you think you don't like it. But I want you to finish this out. I want you to make a commitment to me that for three months, you're going to do it. And then if you really don't like it, you can quit. So you're teaching your child perseverance. You're teaching your child, sometimes it's not that great, but I need to keep going because maybe I'll develop more of a taste for it. And maybe it's a bad situation that I need to get out of. And, oh my word, I can start to master something even though it isn't that pleasant or it isn't my favorite thing. Because every single one of us in our lives, at our jobs, we don't love every element and every moment. And we have to keep going, even though we're in that boat where we wish we didn't have to keep doing this in particular thing. So it is part of helping them to mature and develop a sense of what it takes. So you've got to make that assessment as a parent. Now, if you have a bent, and so you're taking your child consistently to this one thing, whatever that one thing might be, horseback riding lessons or playing a particular sport, volleyball, and your, your child goes to you, you know, I really hate that. I mean, I've been doing this for like two years, but I still hate it. I just hate it. I don't want to do this anymore. You need to respect your developing child and their opinions about things and allow them to have a part in making decisions. Granted, they can't just make the decision. A, they don't have a driver's license in a car. They can't get themselves there. So if they say, Mom, I really want to take drum lessons, and you're like, yeah, I'm not doing it. Okay, well, they're kind of in trouble. They can beat on stuff, but if you won't buy them a drum set or take them to lessons, they can't really. But also, if you're taking them somewhere and taking them somewhere and taking them somewhere and they hate it, then that is something else that you have to respect their growing sense of themselves and let them choose not to. So give them lots of opportunities for exploration and let them start to develop a sense of who they are. When it comes to sports, I do want to tell you this. In today's world, there tend to be people who are very sports oriented, so their kids are in three or four or five things. Then there are people who aren't oriented at all and their kids don't get to do anything. I want to appeal to you to try to find balance. Expose your kids when they're young middles, we'll call these kids, so they're six, seven, or eight, to various things and let them see what they like. And then allow them to participate in what they really, really like. Okay? So, uh, you know, in that process of them developing a sense of themselves and learning what they like, foster what they like and allow them the liberty to choose and help make decisions about what they like. I'm going to end with this. Both of my sons wanted to play stringed instruments. I played the French horn. Never touched a stringed instrument in my life. One of them played the viola and one of them played the cello. They both really loved it. And I couldn't help them much because it wasn't something that I really understood. But wherever they developed this interest, and I can't even tell you very truthfully, uh, they both played stringed instruments. So they played at school and I got them private lessons for a while and it was something they were interested in and I let them do it. In those middle years of exploring who they are and developing a great interest in the world and becoming far stronger with their musculoskeletal system and way stronger in their mind, this is also a time when they are developing life habits. And so you need to really work on consistency in this phase of life. They need to have a specific time of doing their homework. They need to come home even in first, second, or third grade after they've had a snack and maybe half an hour to play outside. They need to start developing the consistent discipline of doing the work that has to happen. After dinner, they need to do their chores right then. There needs to be a 10 or 15 minute segment where they do the dishes, straighten up the table, sweep the floor, vacuum their room, uh, throw in a load of laundry by the time they're 12 years old, take out the trash. They are forming life habits. It is part of what they are doing at school in developing their reading skills and their ability to reason and their mathematic skills. You need to make sure that they're gaining consistent skills at home. That is your responsibility as a parent. So maximize on this time frame in their life 
at allowing them to develop and develop as a contributing member of your household and of your family and they can feel really great about themselves about their mastery of those things and about their contribution to you and to your home you may find additional information on our paintabeautifulpicture.com website additionally you may watch me on rumble and you may also listen to a podcast on buzz sprout or spreaker all under the name paint a beautiful picture. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. You may subscribe and if you are interested in receiving notifications, please hit the notifications button. Have a great time with your middles and really enjoy those years of watching them grow and develop as an amazing human being in your household. Thank you for being with me today.